Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Coronavirus taking its toll on the front lines at two of Metro Detroit's largest health systems. Henry Ford Health System announcing 600 to 700 employees have tested positive, while Beaumont says they have 1,500 staff members staying home because they have COVID-19 symptoms. With the White House warning this could be the worst week of the pandemic, cases of the coronavirus as we come to you tonight at 11, topping 17,000 here in Michigan. Tomorrow morning, state lawmakers will meet in Lansing for the first time in weeks to extend Governor Whitmer's state of emergency declaration. The governor today revealing she plans to extend her stay at home order sometime this week. The death toll across the country now stands at 10,000 plus. Here's what Dr. Anthony Fauci says when asked when things would get back to normal. If you want to get to pre corona virus, you know, that might not ever happen in the sense of the, the fact that the threat is there. But I believe with the therapies that will be coming online and with the fact that I feel confident that over a period of time we will get a good vaccine, that we will never have to get back to where we are right back now. So if that means getting back to normal, then we'll get back to normal. With Detroit police cracking down on large gatherings, Mayor Mike Duggan says 74 $1,000 tickets were issued over the weekend. And starting today, homeowners will be fined for allowing people to congregate on their property. One of the things that evolved over the weekend is we had groups who were gathering on somebody's front lawn. And when the police car would pull up, they would scatter. So there wasn't anybody to write a ticket to. Uh, Starting today, we are writing the $1,000 ticket to the owner of the property. If you let people, a group, gather on your property, you're going to get the $1,000 fine. Mayor Duggan also says car washes with employees are not essential businesses and will be shut down. Automated, automated car washes, though, will be allowed to remain open. Detroit State Representative Karen Whitsitt is at home recovering from COVID-19 and credits a highly debated drug for saving her. Mara McDonald spoke with Representative Whitsitt tonight. First off, Mara, how's she feeling now? So I talked to Representative Whitsitt and I asked her the same thing. I'm like, how are you feeling? And she says, amazing. And I said, okay, as in amazing and 100%. And she said, no, amazing considering how I felt. She told me she thinks it's going to be a couple weeks before she's back to her normal self. State Representative Karen Whitsitt found out she had the virus the day her friend and colleague Isaac Robinson died from it. She has underlying health issues and was going downhill fast. And I thank God that the president of the United States mentioned that drug because it did save me. That drug is hydroxychloroquine, which is undergoing trials at Henry Ford. But as Dr. Frank McGeorge cautions, there is not yet the science to say this is a cure. Whether hydroxychloroquine works or not is a scientific question that still needs an answer. At this point, anyone who says the drug helped them is simply relating an anecdote. I have also seen patients on hydroxychloroquine who have died. I totally understand the need for hope, but it is not a miracle drug. It's hard to come by because of an executive order out of Lansing. Witsit pushed and pushed and got it. I mean, let's just put politics aside. Right now, let's just be human beings and put politics aside. And let me just say that the person who's in office right now, the president of the United States, I give credit where credit is due. She is now recovering, and the president gave her a tweet tonight that said she fears for the rest of Detroit. And I'm looking at people that are in my community that are gathering, having house parties, um, walking up and down the streets with red solo cups, the, the things that they're doing that are just reckless and endangering not only their own lives, but the lives of everyone that they come in contact with. Back here live, Representative Whitsett says she has nothing but respect for the way Mayor Mike Duggan has been handling the situation in Detroit. She says people need to listen to what he is saying. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Indeed. Okay, Mara, thank you. DDOT drivers are mounting pressure on the city to stop bus service during this pandemic. This comes days after fellow bus driver Jason Hargrove died from coronavirus. Weeks earlier, Hargrove recorded a video that has since gone viral, complaining about a passenger coughing on the bus. Priya Mann spoke with Mayor Mike Duggan and the union. As drivers say, they're scared to get on the bus. I'm terrified of getting it. 
I'm terrified of taking it home, and that's just not me. After Detroit bus driver Jason Hargrove died last week from the coronavirus, more drivers are speaking out. It took us to shut the bus system down on March 17th for the mayor to even notice who we were. And ever since then, we haven't heard another thing from the mayor and the buses have gotten back to being the way that they were. The mayor's office disputes that, saying riders can only get on and off from the back of the bus. Fares were canceled, so there's no interaction with drivers, and buses are sanitized several times a day. What we need to do is make that bus ride safe. I'm hoping we get surgical masks in uh, that may be distributed on the buses, but in the meantime, there is no reason that everyone who gets on that bus can't find a way to cover their mouth before they get on. I take a light I have masks and gloves on. Every time someone coughs, I get paranoid. DDOT's union president, Glenn Tolbert, who has coronavirus himself, says he's getting 170 calls a day. If my members feel that they are truly unsafe, then I need them to stay home. I need them to stay home and I will protect them from that. When would it be enough for you to say, we need to stop busing in the city? Well, I mean, it's enough now with brother Jason's uh, the mayor says buses are a lifeline for some Detroiters. You have a number of people in this city who are doing essential jobs, who are only able to get to work because the bus is there. Those are not just essential workers on those buses. Those are people riding up and down all day long with basically no place to go. And to the mayor, I would say, if you want us to help you, help us save our lives so we can help other people's lives. Now, there's about 550 DDOT drivers. The union says 150 are out. The city says drivers are getting tested the same way as first responders. They can also stay at Great Town Casino Hotel if they have vulnerable family members. The union says they continue to talk to members about the future of busing in Detroit. Reporting live, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Dan, their concerns. Okay, Priya, thank you. Well, tonight it's official. The Suburban Collections Showplace in Novi is being converted into a COVID-19 care center. Joining the TCF Center in downtown Detroit. Once it's up and running, the site will provide 250,000 square feet with enough bed space to accommodate up to 1,000 patients. This week, shoppers are going to see some big changes in Kroger stores. The grocery chain is implementing stricter safety measures, including limiting customers to 50% of its building capacity. It is also testing one-way aisles. That's part of a pilot program here in Michigan. The one-way aisles will start as soon as tomorrow in some stores. All right, let's get you caught up on your forecast. Check in with Ben Bailey at his house, tracking warmer weather, but also some storms headed our way, Ben. Yeah, Kevin, tomorrow evening, in fact, we'll just be finishing up with it about this time tomorrow. It's really 6 to 11 we're worried about. But as of right now, not a whole lot out there. We're going to be watching just south of us for the potential of some thunderstorms tonight, but it's really tomorrow uh, where we'll be watching for that severe threat. You can see that there have been some showers up around Lake Huron and a few more, although most of that is uh, just radar trash that we usually see in the <laughs> warmer months. But here's the threat we're watching tomorrow, 6 to 11. The main threat is going to be from hail, large hail of one inch in diameter. Still could be possible to see some damaging wind gusts, but it's the hail that'll be the biggest threat. And about three of our four zones, Metro, West, and South, under the gun tomorrow. North zone, you should see less of an impact. So coming up, we'll look at that more in depth, find out if it's the only shot we've got this week, and some bigger changes that are coming by the end of the week. All coming up in a few minutes, Kim. All right, but I'll take it. He played his entire 22 year career right here in Detroit. A look back at the incredible life and legacy of Mr. Tiger, Al Kaline, next. From the moment you wake up to the moment your day ends, local news has never been more important. That's why Detroit stations came together to bring you the governor's town hall. Throughout this crisis, Local 4 News and Click on Detroit have kept you informed with constant updates from our own Dr. Frank McGeorge, briefings from our mayor and medical experts, and some good news too. We'll keep on giving you what you need so we can all weather this storm together. Stay with Local 4 News and Click on Detroit for the moments that matter.